Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound channel. This is part two in my series on my Project 9 DIY modular synth. In this episode we'll be looking at the design considerations behind the physical dimensions of the box and the panels and also we're we'll looking at the power supply. If you check out the introduction clip to this particular series you will find that Project 9 is based around the little synth modules that I built which ran on 9 volt batteries. Now can't realistically run a whole system on a 9 volt battery. Well, you probably could but not for long. So I built a regulated 9 volt power supply which is probably the simplest power supply I will ever build. But we will have a look at that in a moment. So let's start by having a look at the box and why it is the size it is. This is the Project 9 box with a couple of panels removed. Um, the basic construction is uh, plywood top, bottom, like and sides and then uh, some rails screwed in two things, one is they uh, hold the box together and the other thing is the I can use these uh, what are basically uh, quadrant wooden uh, strips to mount the panels. I did consider whether I should actually go for something that was of a, a Euro rack standard and then I started looking into the availability of Euro rack panels and things were starting to get expensive and one of the reasons for doing this I wanted to keep it easily affordable so that anybody could have a go without spending a lot of money and then just have a lot of fun. So I'd worked out how I was going to build the boxes what I needed to do was work out how big the box needed to be. How big the box needed to be depended on the panel so if I was going to go for Euro rack, I had to build a box that would take a Euro rack panel. As I said that was getting expensive so I looked at what panels would be available and I thought right I want to get some aluminium panels for the front. So I was looking at either a 2mm thick aluminium which I believe these shiny panels are or the power panel I think is might be slightly thinner I'm not sure on this one but I have used 1.2, 1.5 and 2mm panels they all work the 1.2 is starting to get a little bit flimsy. If you put a lot of sockets on a 1.2 and we're plugging things in and out, probably yeah, just about on the limit. So through experience, ideally I would say 1.5 millimeter aluminium sheet. So the next thing then was the availability of the aluminium sheet. And I found that you could shopping around on the internet, you could quite cheaply get aluminium sheet cut to size. So what size? Well I didn't want to go too big and I didn't want to go too small so I opted for 150 millimeter top to bottom. So then it was a case of what sizes do I want for the width of the panels. And you can actually get the panels in 150 millimeter, 50, 100, 150, etc. So I could put panels together that had kind of a Euro right principle without going all the way for the crazy numbers of the Euro right design. So in Project 9 so far, the panels are essentially the the first ones I got were these, uh, which are actually a, a polished face aluminium and these are 150 by 150 millimeters and it allows me to build several modules onto one panel which yeah it's okay it works for this system but I've started now kind to get the, the individual models so I can swap things around a lot easier I'm now looking at putting individual models modules 
on individual panels. Um, so an example here would be, uh, this is a, a rescued Vox Wah pedal which is now being made into a module. Um, there is actually a, a, a video series on how I did this so if you want to look that one up then follow the link. Um, but that one fits nicely on a 50 millimeter panel. Um, and here's another example of a 150 millimeter panel that has actually got on there. There is uh, an envelope, an AR envelope generator, and then some uh, passive filters. So based on the ready availability of reasonably inexpensive aluminium panels I came up with a design of box that would take a number of panels of 150 millimeter high and then any multiples of 50 millimeter wide so that was the design considerations for the physical dimensions of the box the depth well, it, some circuits mount flat. Some of the circuits, if the circuit board is getting a bit too big to go across the panel, then it goes into the box. So, allow enough room, oops, that's upside down, allow enough room for the circuit board to sit in the box. What was really fortuitous, and I didn't actually measure this, is that when I put the box together, it fits just perfectly on my shelf system above my keyboard. So <laughs> that was a bonus. It's one of those life's happy accidents. Okay, so let's now have a look at the actual power supply that I've been talking about. This is the power supply panel. Looking at the outside of the panel, you've got an input socket which I'll talk about the graphics in a moment um, an on off switch and just a, an LED that tells you that the power is on what does it look like at the back well there is the circuit as I say probably the simplest power supply circuit I've ever built. What it actually contains is LM78L09 9 volt DC voltage regulator which is the thing that looks like a little black transistor in the middle there. Two capacitors and really that's it. That's the circuit that provides the 9 volt regulated supply. The additional bits are, we have an input socket. Now, to drive the 9 volt regulator, the data sheet says you need a, a, a minimum of around about 11 volts, but you can go up to something like, um, I can't remember exactly what the data sheet says, but it's, it's 15 volt plus. Um, in my case what I did I went hunting round to see what DC power supplies I had looking for something that was around 12 volts and as I've written on the front panel here the one I found was actually a 13.5 volt which works perfectly fine it was just one I had lying around one of the things to note is to make sure you check what the polarity of your DC power supply is and on this one the center pin is plus and the sleeve is negative so but make sure you wire the socket up the right way around when you connect it onto the circuit then of course for the output I've basically just got some uh, two pin headers which allow me to put distribution wires on there to distribute power to the various modules and just for convenience there's an on off switch which 
links to the uh, input socket and then on the output side I've got an LED that tell me that there's there's power to the system with a current little current limiting resistor so I don't actually burn out the LED and that's it that gives me a stable regulated 9 volt power supply um, one of the things that you can do this this um, arrangement where you've got pin headers for the positive and negative pins further down the box I've put another one of just just a board with we literally just got pin headers and that's where this lead disappears off to another header strip which allows for distribution of power further down the box to the other panels and that's it and it's a very reliable power supply it works really well um, yeah what more can I say a very very simple way of getting a reliable stable 9 volt power supply into your 9 volt modular synth the thing about it though is it's only ground and plus 9 volt this is not a dual rail so if you're looking at synth module designs that are dual rail this won't do it but because this concept is based around things that would run on a 9 volt battery they're not dual rail anyway so perfect for this this design concept so that's it for this episode of the project 9 DIY modular system build be sure to come back and check out further episodes as I go through all the various panels what's in there how I put them together and give some demonstrations as to what they actually sound like and how they make or modify sounds um, so yeah if you don't want to miss an episode subscribe and if you like what you see then don't forget to click the like button and yeah come back again we'll see you soon and it's straightforward isn't it so go on have a go build your own <laughs>